five things your worldview must account for, the four biggest questions your worldview must answer, eight questions every worldview must answer, five questions, questions every worldview must answer. 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 If you've debated religion, then you've probably seen a list a lot like this. A list which contains a seemingly arbitrary number of oddly specific questions, which the author expects every worldview to answer. This is a surprisingly common staple of apologetics, not just in written blogs, but here on YouTube as well. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going when I die? There are really four questions of life, David. Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. That forms our worldview. Where did I come from? What does life actually mean? How do I differentiate good and evil? What happens to a human being when he or she dies? It's a perspective of reality. That's what we mean by a world view. Everybody has a world view. You can't not have a world view. Now, you know, every worldview answers three questions. Essentially, where do we come from, creation, what went wrong, fall, and how do we fix it, solution. The most charitable interpretation of lists like these, of questions that every worldview must answer, would be to say that they're just trying to define a worldview. Which is funny, because there are actual dictionary definitions of the word worldview. According to Webster, a worldview is a comprehensive conception or apprehension of the world, especially from a specific standpoint. And according to the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, a worldview is a person's way of thinking about and understanding life, which depends on their beliefs and attitudes. These both seem like reasonably broad definitions that describe how most people use the word worldview. But for some reason, many Christian apologists are not satisfied with these definitions, and they instead present lists like these to try and define a worldview in their own oddly specific way. To these apologists, a worldview is a view of the world which must answer a list of specific questions. But I have some questions of my own. Number one, let's pretend for a second that these apologists' lists actually agreed with each other. Where did you get this list? The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy? Philosophy Stack Exchange? The back of your Reese's Puffs? Where? Or did you just make it up? I think I know the answer, which I'll get to in a minute, but I think this question is worth asking when you encounter a list like this. Number two, why must a worldview provide answers to all of these questions? What happens if it doesn't? After all, it's perfectly reasonable to not know something due to a lack of information which you consider to be valid. So if, for example, someone doesn't claim to know where humans came from, or if someone doesn't claim to know what happens after death, does this mean that person doesn't have a worldview? The thing is, worldviews are piecemeal. They are not all or nothing. A worldview may be constructed from many different interchangeable elements, so long as all these elements are compatible with each other. Even if one element turns out to be false, that doesn't mean every other element of the worldview is therefore false as well. This only happens when the false element happens to be the crux of all the other elements, which may or may not be the case depending on the worldview you're discussing. So again, I ask, why must a worldview answer all of these questions? And number three, why these questions specifically? Why don't any of these lists include questions like, what is my role in society? Or how do I reduce human suffering here on Earth? These also seem like very important questions, questions that other worldviews do try to answer. Do these questions not matter? Are these topics not actually part of a worldview? Again, why these questions specifically? As just one point of contrast, one of the features of Hinduism is the Four Stages of Life, which is a framework for people's roles in society as a function of age. Christianity doesn't have this, so... What, is Christianity not a worldview? Does Christianity have some explaining to do on this front? The one question no Christian worldview can answer? I think the reason why apologists try to define worldviews in these terms, that is, questions every worldview must answer, is because they're working backwards from Christianity, 
rather than taking an honest look at what all worldviews actually have in common. Christianity has important things to say about what happens after death, and about our origins and about morality, so, the apologist reasons, either intentionally or not, that's all that really matters for any worldview. They have all the answers, so they invent the questions around them, Jeopardy style. My final question, therefore, is this. Can we all simply be content with the broader dictionary definitions of what a worldview is, and start the conversation by simply asking what the other person believes about reality and their place within it, rather than pigeonholing every worldview in terms of the answers that one particular worldview provides. While I can certainly appreciate the suggestion to ask about, for example, origins or morality, this idea that every worldview is answering these specific questions, or must answer these specific questions, is tantamount to question-begging from the apologist.